Hello, Athon authors and fans. We have Rachel Aukis waiting to talk to us about her next series and sci-fi. If you're interested, stick around. We have also two other releases for today. I'm going to go through a quick description of those two. First off is one that a lot of people have been very excited about, Wizard's Tower by Lanther. And so I'm going to go into a brief description of Wizard's Tower real quick. The humans, the humans call me Neiman Fargus. They call me wizard and elementalist and enchanter. They call me teacher. They call me adventurer. But I don't care. Not anymore. For more than 150 years, I've served the kingdom of Senna through four kings and a queen, two wars and a rebellion. I found, founded and taught at a magic school. I fought against beast waves and dungeon breaks. But now, now the one close friend I have left has passed. So I'm done with the politics and the economics, the short and busy lives of humans, are more burden than benefit on the weary soul of this half elf. And so the reviews are coming in very well for this one. Uh, they love the world building and they find it engaging and uh, magic enchanting and mysteries uh, are very well written. So check that one out if you're looking for uh, something in the fantasy genre. Next up we have Last Battle. This is book three of Starship Gilead. And so, the description real quick, war has crossed the galaxy and Earth is the last battlefield. Adrian Manthus has lost everything, her father, her ship, and her love, trapped behind enemy lines. She and a small contingent of space marines must explore desolate worlds in search of an ancient artifact that will give them a fighting chance against Kokobal, the god emperor who has conquered the galaxy. But without the starship Gilead, how can Adrian hope to make a stand against her tyrannical enemy? So this one is book three of three by John Graves. And so the other ones were well received. If so, if you're looking for a military sci-fi, there's another one to take a look at. But today we are talking to Rachel about Waymaker Wars, her first book entry in a new trilogy. So let's welcome Rachel. Hey, Rachel, how's it going? Hey, John, it's going good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you. So Space Junk. That's an interesting book title for book one. Tell us a little bit about Waymaker's Wars and why Space Junk. Yeah, so Space Junk, yeah, kind of fun. It's it's not a romance or erotic, even though the name could could mean different things. But <laughs> <laughs> now it, it is classic space adventure. Uh, if you enjoyed Harlock, Space Pirate, and The Expanse, um, I think you'd really enjoy this. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that I read uh, a crap ton of science fiction. I love it. Um, I mean, I read a crap ton of everything, but, um, <laughs> but I just don't see a lot of books um, that have kind of that bigger than life feel that Harlock had. And, um, and if you're not familiar with that, that started off as Japanese main gun and they ended up doing a movie on it called Harlock space pirate. And I always thought it was yeah. fantastic and fun and, and needs to be more of it. It needs to be basically its own subgenre, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that that was kind of some of the inspiration behind this. I was like, oh, well, I want a captain who has been around a whole lot longer than your average guy, and he's mysterious, and his crew's mysterious, and his ship, which is named Cabron, which in Spanish is um, bastard, <laughs> which, hey, my editor let it slide, so it's got to be okay, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but but it just kind of explained this whole cruise they've been around a while they got their mystery but they've also kind of just laid low and gotten lazy i guess is way to looking at it so now they're space junkers um picking up garbage mm -hmm. you know anything to stay off the radar because they do have secrets they want to keep and um but that doesn't always work out really well and they get pulled right into this big rebellion between all the colonies and this big oppressive government force and uh, and it's kind of interesting on how they they come to play in all of that because right. obviously captain jack is going to save the day but but it's all in there yeah 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 it's um i've read a lot of your reviews for your other books which you've written quite a few you get lots of compliments to your original story plots in sci-fi and I've got to imagine that's difficult at this point. So uh, what are some of the ways and angles you have to look at something like this and, and come up with something original that's not just a rehash of same old yeah. stuff? 
You know, that's, that's funny because I do get asked that a lot about my ideas. And I've always been such a daydreamer. Um, it used to get me in trouble in school because I won't pay attention. But so the ideas have never been a problem. What I do is, you know, I keep notebooks. I either have a little paper notebook with me or Microsoft OneNote. I've got pages and pages in there of just ideas hit me everywhere. Um, could be the way someone walks across the street or, you know, I see something quirky and or someone says something that makes me crack up and, and I try to jot those down. And uh, so the idea part, I feel like I never have a problem coming up with new stories. Probably my greatest problem is not finding the time to write everything I want to write because I have, Oh man, I have at least 12 projects right now that I have like halfway outlined that I want to write, and, but I don't have that much time. <laughs> I can <laughs> yeah. only do one project at a time. So. Yeah, I, I'm i very thankful for the cell phone notepad uh, notes and uh, because I find myself, I, I'm wishing that I had written down so many things. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. That could go in a book. That could go in my book. And um, the ones I get down, I'm always thankful for looking back on them. But the ones I forget, I was like, what was that idea last night as I was going to sleep? I should have actually sat up and written it down. So uh, I'm not surprised that someone with your well, how many books you've finished that you're actually disciplined at getting those ideas down. So, so what yeah. are Captain Harlock, uh, I think inspired quite a few other mangas and animes that we're trying to repeat. What are some other inspirations that you've found that uh, you think personifies, you know, good sci-fi? Oh, good sci-fi. Um, you know, the classics, you know, the ones like Joe Halderman with the forever war. I just loved that book of his, um, you know, it's, I like a lot of the classics because they were starting kind of from a blank slate. So they really, mm -hmm. everything that was put out was original and, and it's just a lot of fun. And so I do like reading all of the different things. I also like reading um, classic classics, not just classic science fiction. So what, one of my first books that I wrote was a zombie book. I, it was called hundred days in Deadland, And it was based off of Dante Alighieri's divine comedy and and so what I like to do is I read the old, old stuff, <laughs> you know, the thing 2000 years old and, and it kind of inspires me, the storylines. I try to take those and use them as the starting of my outline for a new book. So I've done that several times. Um, I didn't do it for this particular series, but my next series I've um, run through that. It's interesting. It's interesting because if you were to say you did that for any type of modern book, you would be like, ah, boo. But if you do it for a classic. Yeah. <laughs> at yeah least, no, that's at fine. least in a classic and you're, you're a genius. So, I know. <laughs> so I, I think I need to be reading more classics. <laughs> Make things easy on myself. Yeah. So, that's yeah, great. But there's that's plenty cool. of good stuff out there too. It's, yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt, you know, some of the current, yeah. like, Every time a murder bot book comes out, I have to read it from Martha Wells. And, and then I'm a comic book reader. So I think half my ideas come from those. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. I, I find myself uh, webtoons and, um, and mangas and stuff like that. I, 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 yeah. For some reason, I just love the, uh, the, just the, the Asian influence on it and their approach to fantasy and sci-fi and, and psychological thrillers and stuff like that, which has just now been, you know, Netflix and stuff like that's kind of getting picking up on that uh, that read. Uh, Bart of today says hello, yeah. and he's he's a big fan of Murderbot as well. So. Yes, yeah. So tell us about some of the other projects you just we just were talking before. You've finished this trilogy, so this is book one, Waymaker yes. Wars, book two, and book three. Yeah, pretty much done, and getting getting uh, their dates, publishing dates soon, and. Uh, but you're constantly on the move. So tell us what's next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Freezer Burn and Malfunction Junction, that's books two and three in this trilogy, um, already with the editor. So guaranteed the readers are going to get them um, June 14th and July 12th for the next two books. So bam, 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 you're going to get it. this series. Um, so yeah, beyond that, I have got, I'm finishing up a superhero novella that I've been working on. That one's been through Wattpad. Cool. Yeah, and having fun with him, judgmental. And um, and then I've got a post apoc series that I've been putting off for so long because I've been doing a lot of, I've been, my head's been in space, a space cadet. 
Uh, so I'm ready to finally get back to my old, uh, old the roots and doing a post-apocalyptic trilogy that has a, a really fun new angle. It's not quite zombies. It's something meaner and worse. And, and so mm. I was just doing that for a palate cleanser because I really, really enjoy the post-apoc stuff. Um, oh, that's good. And then, yeah, next up is a game lit I've got the, working on. And, uh, and that one's fun. It should be a really long one because that one's going to be almost epic in links but yeah it yeah be a I, good um, standalone tale i i find myself loving lit rpg game lit and stuff like that because i feel like there's just okay it's almost like <laughs> i hate to say it, it's almost like dragon ball z there's always another there's always another bad guy villain that they can go into there's always new elements and uh power-ups and systems it's it's, it's very basic but i i love <laughs> some of that stuff and I'd say Defiance of the Fall, and and we have have had so many other ones. He who fights with monsters. We have quite a few with Athon that uh, I've I've just become fans of. Um, so I think uh, I'm looking forward to a game lit by you and seeing. It. I, it's interesting that you say palate cleanser because I think it's fascinating how one when you're successful in one genre, hopping over to another, and so the ideas that branch back and forth. And expand the genre and make it more valuable as a genre. So it is. Yeah, I love it. I need to do that. I need to dip my toes in different genres. I know it drives some of my readers crazy because they're like, stick to a lane, you know, because they, you know, a lot of them only read science fiction or only read oh, yeah. horror or, you know, you name it. And I'm one of those that I'm like, yeah, but I got to write what I really want to write too at the time. And, and yeah. so I try to find the balance to where I don't focus too much all in in one area and and hit it all so we'll yeah. see if it works well uh, right what you feel like writing i think that's your key to success of course because <laughs> if you're not enjoying it who else is going to <laughs> so. yeah exactly yeah good point yeah i think we've seen that with a lot of writers recently people that are just kind of obviously burned out on their own stories and so they're not getting it done as quickly as they should maybe they're taking five or six years to get a book out <laughs> when <laughs> yeah george uh, yeah uh, he who shall not be named yeah uh, so. yeah oh. and, and it's true because our you know netflix kind of trained us to become become binge watchers. So we became binge readers. And so if we love a book, we want the next book now. You know, when yeah. I was a child, I had no problem waiting for a year or two years or three years for the next book in a series. But now that's unheard of. You know, if you have to wait more than nine months for a book, you're like, oh, I'm giving up on this writer. They're just not yeah. coming out with it fast enough. And so, yeah, we yeah. are living in this very fast paced um, world and it and it can wear down a writer without a doubt uh yeah i completely agree i think we're seeing it um i think we're seeing a huge transition to the audiobooks it's uh been yeah. kind of crazy how fast that has grown uh but when you got that fast delivery system and you've got uh, subscriptions and stuff like that i mean it's like i work for a publisher but uh, I pretty much just listen to books now because I don't have time to sit down and, and casually read with, you know, fatherhood work and all that stuff like that. So when I've got the mindless jobs, I just put a book in my ear. So. Oh, I know it's not, it's so nice. Cause yeah, when I'm cleaning house or driving somewhere, I can listen to an audio book where I can't read the print or Kindle version when I'm doing those things. Um, I don't retain as well, but I'm still at least getting through the book and, yeah, I've noticed I've really started doing more and more audiobooks. Yeah. Also let your eyes have some time to relax yes. and not stare at a screen, which most of us do constantly. Yes. We blame us for not wanting to sit there and stare at small print. <laughs> oh, I know. I spend all day working on a manuscript and then at the end of the day I go grab my Kindle and yeah, my oh, eyes hate me. Save my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, it sounds like there's a lot of fantastic things coming uh, from Rachel Uckes. So Yeah, well, thanks for having me. And yeah, this one has audiobook. So um, Scott Aeo, who is one of my favorite performers of all time for audio, is, is doing the audios for this series. So fantastic. It's basically pretty, pretty freaking good. So yeah. Well, very much looking forward to uh, listening to it. And uh, everyone out there, fans and readers, give this one a look. And uh, we look forward to talking to you next week where we have 
a lot of releases. This one was a little bit, uh, what, three books today? And uh, now we're going to make up for that next week with like something like seven or eight books. <laughs> so, wow. uh, But uh, take a look at book one of Waymaker Wars, and uh, we'll see you all next week.